Alrighty guys, and welcome back to another LEGO set review from Brick by Brick. And today we have the LEGO Dimensions Starter Pack. And this is pretty cool. Um, it's obviously a video game. If you guys don't know what LEGO Dimensions is, it's basically a game where you can take heroes from basically, I think, 14 different themes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, including the Lord of the Rings, DC Comics, um, and the LEGO Movie. Those are the three included with the starter pack. Um, I currently only have a couple um, uh, fun packs along with this, and those fun packs would be the Nia, Z, um, Jay, and Zane fun packs. Those are the only other ones I have, which, um, you know. But there are a bunch more, and I hopefully will be getting some. There's a couple that I'm looking forward to. You do get this cool poster um, that shows all of them. It's double-sided, one side's in English, one side's uh, in Spanish and French, I think. I don't know. But um, I'm not going to unfold it because I don't have enough room right here to show you. I might do another video later showing that. But um, you do get one instruction booklet. However, the instruction booklet um, is also... the This is the instructions to build the portal. It's also in the game, um, which, you know, is interesting. And um, you will notice that, um, I'm going to point this out right here, I am partway through the game, these pieces here, and this thing right there, which I guess I can um, build up and just put them there to show you, um, but these things, like all the keystones, um, originally, like, before you uh, play the game, they're all, you can see how they're on the portal there. Um, in the instruction booklet, it tells you to put them on the back because you put them in the front once you find them in the game, which is pretty cool. I kind of like that. And then also, um, this guy here is Expo. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about him because he's kind of a important part of the game, but um, after you have all, after you get all the keystones, the so next level after that, you take apart, um, like, here, I'll put it the way it is in the instructions real quick. You have these parts here. Whoopsies. You have those little parts, which I can't seem to put on. And then you have this side. And they go back here. And then this thing, um, let's see what's it look like. It's got the, um, this thing here, the lever pointing upwards and this thing goes through like the back I think right yep and that thing goes right there so this is how um, the portal looks kinda um, I'll do a quick look at it in a minute but um first we're gonna take a look at the figures so the figures are probably the coolest part um let's see where can I put the figures to display them kinda I'll put them right where Batman is so, the first figure we'll take a look at is Batman, because he's the one standing here. Um, it's kind of a little bit blurry, but I'll have to deal with that. He does come with a Batarang as his accessory, which is cool-ish. And he obviously comes with an extra, because he usually comes with an extra. Um, I'm going to take him off his base for a second, so you can see they all have printed bases. Each base, um, you know, recognize the character. So you can just put this base here and it will recognize that that is Batman. So you can just take the figure and use it somewhere else. You don't have to go and find your figures and put them on the bases if you're playing with them outside of the uh, Dimensions um, gamepad. He does have the normal Batman face, um, but his torso is different than the other Batman that I have that I thought was the same. Um, but it's not the same. I'm not sure if this torso is exclusive or if it's uh, just a newer Batman torso that I don't have. Because um, the Batman I have, I think, is from... It's from the Riddler Chase set. Um, and I'm not sure if it's just a different version. But it looks similar. So that's why I'm wondering if it's exclusive. And he obviously has the Batman mask. And no leg print on the torso. And the other thing that's different between mine and this one's is that mine has uh, a black hip piece instead of gray. So move Batman to the side. And we'll take a look at Gandalf next. Gandalf was my favorite figure out of this because it's the only character in the starter pack that I didn't have. Because, um, 
I had a Wild Style, but I didn't have that face on the Wild Style, and I had a Batman, but it obviously didn't have that torso. But, I mean, Gandalf, I just didn't have any of him. He has his staff, which is, you know, same as Sensei, uh, from Ninjago. He has the, uh, wizard hat in gray, obviously. It looks cool. I like it. Um, but, you know, this beard was brand new to Gandalf when it was first, like, when it first came out. But, um, it's since been used on the wizard from series 12, which I have. And you can see his face print there. I'm just taking off his beards that you can see. They print on his torso, which is pretty cool. And I believe he has back printing too. Yep, he's got back printing there. Not that, not that complicated, but you know, not that complex a back print. But yeah, and then his figure base here is pretty cool. Um, it's interesting. Not exactly sure what it looks like this for, but. It does definitely looks kind of unique, and I mean, I guess, like, I think from what I remember, because I've, I've watched uh, reviews of most of the fun packs and stuff, I think the Legolas uh, base looks like that as well. And um, Legolas actually is a pretty cool character, too. I didn't get any of the Lord of the Rings sets, but I do like the Lord of the Rings, so that's why I am um, excited about this Gandalf figure. Um, honestly, I preferred The Hobbit over The Lord of the Rings. I don't know about you guys, but... Um, the movies. The books, I don't know which ones I preferred better. I did read all the books and see all the movies. Um, I, it actually took me forever to watch The Return of the King. I don't know why, but I just didn't watch it for the longest time. So, Wild Style here is very cool. Um, her face is the same one is used in the 2015 Lego movie sets, not the 2014 ones. Um, it's the same, basically, this face only appeared in the Bad Cop Car Chase, which is pretty cool. But, um, she has this brand new, exclusive, I'm 100% sure, uh, sure that it is exclusive, and that is this Relic Scanner piece. And this is included because it is important to the storyline. They use this thing to find the, uh, keystones, which um, I'll show you what the keystones are in a minute, because they are included in the set. Now let's focus back to Wild Style. And um, you can see she has her normal Wild Style hair, and um, she's got a happy smiling face print in, on this side of her face, and an angry mad face print on the back. Um, she does have her nice little hood piece, which is cool, obviously. It's a hood piece. Um, this is this hood piece is only used on Wild Style in this color, but they use the same mold for a Green Arrow figure um, in green. And there's her torso and leg print, not too complicated, but um, well her leg print's not too complicated, but her torso print's pretty cool. And um, if you don't have a Wild Style figure, she's a pretty good figure. And uh, most of you are probably familiar with Wild Style because if you're a Lego fan, you probably saw the Lego movie because. Just about everyone did. Um, and then her base has the same blue and pink graffiti kind of thing. And on it says uh, WS on the front. Kind of hard to get that confused with other figures, which is a good thing. It's very it's um, very good for the bases to be distinct because, um, you know. On obvious, I don't think I mentioned this with the... Uh, with the instruction book that I was starting to, but then I got sidetracked with the differences between the instructions and what I had built. Um, you build the portal, and then it tells you to put Batman on the portal, and then start up the game, and then you continue building with the in-game building instructions to build the Batmobile, which I'm sure you've seen sitting right here, but you probably didn't know exactly what it was, because I didn't tell you, but it is pretty recognizable, so you probably, you actually probably did. But um, the Batmobile can obviously be rebuilt, which is an interesting feature in the game. And I'll probably do another video talking about rebuilding, maybe showing off the rebuilds of the stuff that I have. Because I have, I mean, I've played the game quite a bit, I guess. I'm halfway through the story mode. Um, but I did go into the Lord of the Rings hub world and steal the Dwarf's Bounty red brick. So then I got a bunch of studs and basically upgraded all the vehicles I have. Um, so, you know. Um, but the Batmobile is pretty cool. It does roll nicely. I'm just going to roll it right here so you can see. It rolls really quite nicely. I just, you know, can't roll it because it's going to tight space. But um, it's very cool. 
And uh, the thing I like about these rebuilds, the rebuilds of these things, is they, from what I understand, they use every single piece, which um, is cool because you won't lose any of the pieces um, for your LEGO Dimension stuff. So it's pretty cool. It is micro scale, but um, this is actually one of the better um, fun pack builds, uh, or not fun pack builds, but um, vehicle builds, because um, it, you know, one of the better micro scale ones, just because it looks the same in the game. There's other ones like, uh, for example, the Ninja Copter that I have here. It looks very different in the game. Um, same with the Samurai Mech, but I really like the uh, Samurai Mech actual real-life build. But, um, you know, obviously, um, this rebuilds into the Bat Blaster and the... Uh, I forget what the last one's called, but it kind of looks like a... It's got this big, like, tail on the back. It's interesting. Um, but, you know, all these uh, little fun pack builds are okay. Um, and I will do more talking about that when I review actual fun packs. But um, here is the LEGO Dimensions um, portal base kind of thing. Um, it is obviously, this is a build, and you put it on top of this piece here, which is the actual electronic components, and um, these things light up. I wish I actually had my Wii U hooked up here, just so I could show you how it lights up when you join the game and starts doing rainbow colors. But you can fit one figure here, and then you can fit up to three on each side, so a total of seven figures and vehicles can be in the game at the same time. And it has um, two little two-by-two two stud sections um, that are molded into it, or they might actually be other plates glued in, but I don't know. Um, but they are put on there so that you can actually attach the portal, but I'm going to detach the portal for now. And um, obviously back here, these five little things are where you attach the keystones. Um, in the instruction booklet, and this is where the fifth one goes here. But um, this is obviously just to hide them away so that I mean it doesn't exactly spoil the uh, thing. But this um, here, this section, I like this section because it fits basically perfectly over the little thing there. You can see you can put the figure in there. That's where it would go. But um, so obviously the keystones. If you don't know what they are, they're these little. I'm gonna move this. Uh, these little shield-looking pieces. Well, they they are shield pieces, I think. They're mostly used as shield pieces. Um, so you have a bunch of keystones. I think this is called the shift keystone. Um, the one thing I don't like about these keystone printed pieces, they're all printed, which is very cool. Uh, it's nice to get a bunch of printed pieces. But the thing I don't like about this one, about um, these keystones, is that all of them, I think, except for one I know is the same in the game, and another one is might be the same in the game, this one. Um, the rest of them all, they uh, don't have the same colors. Like, this is red, yellow, and blue in the game. But that's the shift keystone. This is the chroma keystone. Again, red, yellow, blue. This is the elemental keystone. It has, um, I, I don't know what colors it is in the game, but I know the top thing's red. And this basically gives you elemental powers. I'm not going to really explain what all of them do. This one's a scale keystone. It can grow and shrink you. And this one is a rift keystone. Or the locate keystone, I think it's officially called, and you use it to like find the uh, I don't know, find random things and some of them. The portal build itself, though, is quite nice. It's obviously like you wouldn't buy this just for the portal because it is a hundred dollars. The starter pack. Um, I got it for Christmas. I have a feeling my parents probably got it, you know, on like Black Friday when it was cheaper. Cause I don't think they would pay a hundred dollars for it, but you know, uh, these things in the middle kind of simulate the portal and the rest of it is like the opening around it. I like these medium azure like uh, angle pieces like uh, you can see them here kind of like the pieces that are like that. I like them in medium azure. They look really good and um, yeah. So there are a couple stickers on the uh, starter pack. There's these ones on the side which you know eh whatever. And these ones here, I don't know exactly what they are. These are supposed to be some mechanical controls. And this here in the middle is the Vorton computer. That's what it's called. And um, this is basically where you go to uh, start levels and stuff. And you can select the levels that you've already done. And, um, yeah. So the one thing I do like about this is that all the medium azure plates. It just looks cool. I like the medium azure accent colors. But, um, obviously, you saw Expo earlier. This, again, I'm just going to do it. One more time, show you how you build Expo. You take all this stuff apart, right? The, these three pieces, these three things. And you take um, these things, put them on the sides. Really. 
and then you take his arms, turn them. He's a very simple build, which makes him very easy for me to replicate. I gotta take this thing out though. And then you take this lever, flip it backwards, put that stud on the front, and then go like that. I know it was kind of fast for you guys, you probably couldn't tell what I was doing, but there is Expo. He's a pretty cool character, kind of funny. He's a, like, uh, I think in the first cutscene that you build him, he's like, oh, it's kind of hard to assemble your... Uh, thanks for putting me back together. It's kind of hard to assemble yourself when you don't have arms or something like that. He's just something similar along the lines of that. You can just hang him on there if you don't want him to fall. That's what I do because I... Um, well, that, that's what I did when I brought my, uh, you know, the Lego Dimension starter pack up here so that I could review it. Because um, my Wii is downstairs. Um, but yeah, I obviously, um, got a Wii U for Christmas. So anyway, um, and it obviously has the cord attached, like, you can't take the cord off of the base thing. So that's why, there's a cord here. But, um, and there's also a Lego logo here, which is printed, um, I think, um, if you didn't notice that. So anyway... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please um, rate, comment, and subscribe if you did. Uh, I will be doing, hopefully, some more LEGO Dimension stuff. I might be doing some unboxings, possibly. I didn't do it for the fun packs because, um, obviously, it was Christmas. My whole family was here. Um, you wouldn't have been able to hear me, probably, if I did. I didn't have a bunch of space because, you know, I put all my stuff on my desk for some reason. All the stuff I got for Christmas. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, I was kind of out of a recording studio, uh, whoops, which is why this is a little late coming out. I did do, I did anticipate for that and do a bunch of pre-recording before Christmas, just because, you know, I figured this would happen. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you did, and have a fan for a fantastic day. And I'll see you guys all next time. I may try and get a capture card to record LEGO Dimensions, some gameplay of it, but... I'm not sure if that's going to happen, so don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all next time.